Thanks, and I uh, have the privilege here to kick off and change gears for our next section, which is to really talk a little bit about how we're taking all this great cloud technology, the, some of the AI ops techniques and combining it with the unique edge data that we have to serve, to kind of solve for mainstream line of business sort of problems, right? And what I wanted to talk about is probably one of the biggest sort of challenges that many organizations, almost every organization is having around the world. And it's basically, how do we get from this current state of affairs, right, with COVID and everyone being displaced back to a new normal? Uh, Michael Dickman had talked a little bit about Aruba and our unique capabilities and how we've powered the digital workplace in the past, how that workplace over time has increased with uh, IoT sensors, become more autonomous, really provide a lot more mobility. But the past three months or so, you know, we are in a very, very different sort of workplace. So I'm gonna jump right into that right now. So when we talk about what is Workplace 2.0, um, we really envision it as a three-stage sort of journey. And Aruba is playing in these three specific sort of areas, right? And we're kind of coining this new term, the reimagined workplace. So one would be, supporting a lot of our customers and their organizations for uh, uh, their employees as they work from home. And a lot of it is that edge that a lot of folks counted on and being in the office and the peripherals now are needing to move back home. And uh, we need to be able to securely connect those devices as they need to go back to private data centers or up into the cloud. There's a second part of it, which is right now where we're really doing a lot of work assisting our customers is starting in Asia and is moving kind of towards the Western hemisphere. And is this idea about return to office and new sort of technologies leveraging both edge data, cloud analytics around health and safety. And I'll come back to this because we're gonna do a demo around this. And then the final stage is around this hybrid workplace. We feel, and we've been talking to a lot of folks in the design community, the real estate community that work from home is not going away. It's no longer just a temporal business continuity event, but for many organizations, there's gonna be a lot of folks that may be situated for home for parts of the week and then going into the office. And that's gonna drive very, very new sort of requirements around the types of technology that we need to provide and the types of connectivity. With respect to how the cloud has actually impacted us and helped us with this journey, um, probably say the first piece is, as you can imagine, there's a tremendous demand for our remote access point product that really allows customers to hook up their devices. And that's been a product that we've had around for almost a decade now. And most recently, we've that was traditionally an on-prem product. We've now moved a lot of the gateway functionality into the cloud. It's allowed us to scale way, way, way more quickly than we ever could. And it was just in time for uh, you know, this pandemic, right? We couldn't have planned it any better. Um, from a return to office perspective, Jose talked a little bit about, you know, a lot of the great techniques that we're doing in the cloud. We're pulling in a lot of great Wi-Fi telemetry, Bluetooth telemetry, and we need to analyze that telemetry. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then the last piece here is around the hybrid workplace. Prior to COVID, we were already working with a lot of different uh, partner providers that were delivering solutions to the workplace, whether it was room reservations, visitor management, you know, sensory data, they were all cloud native. And one thing that was unique about it was they were able to really enhance and change their products on a consumer timeframe, time cycle. And as we start to move and a lot of our context is moving to the cloud, it is allowing us to do cloud to cloud integrations. And as a, as a matter of fact, that's our preferred model, right? It allows us to be a lot more agile with that space so that when occupants are in the space, they sense that the space is not static, but it's moving very, very quickly. So with that, I wanna just drive into probably the use case that we're getting the most, most inquiries, attention around, and we're actively deploying. Is this idea around allowing organizations to reopen their offices and providing tools to allow them to allow their employees feel, to feel safe. And one of the principal tools that there's a lot of interest around is around contact tracing. The idea, of if there's a sick, sick individual, they report to HR, HR now has the ability to interview that person and figure out what contacts they've made over the past two weeks and assist with that interview effort. So here, what you'll see is our access points all have Wi-Fi built in, obviously. They have Bluetooth, they have IoT radio stacks in it. We have a significant base, probably tens of billions of square feet of space that's covered by our infrastructure that makes us uniquely 
um, interesting to a lot of customers. They want to use their existing infrastructure to be able to do this. And then we're sending that data up into the cloud so that we have the ability to be able to process that data and figure out, you know, what's an actual static device and what's an actual user, right? And then through that, we're now providing dashboards back to not IT, but in many cases, HR or health individuals within the organization to allow them to figure out what's actually going on. So probably the best way to show this rather than through a slide, I wanna jump, jump into a quick demo just to kind of show you the power of the edge and the cloud uh, together. So here is uh, one of our dashboards and we have customers running on this already. And this dashboard basically shows us one our Portland site we are not open in the US, but we did send uh, individual back into the office uh, several weeks ago and put wearable devices, Bluetooth devices on chairs. And he basically played musical chairs for a day so that we could have data here. So you could see here on this floor within Portland, we have 18 devices or 18 would have been so-called individuals. And uh, what, what you could see is once we have that data, syncing it up, we actually could do some unique things before we even going to contact tracing here. What you could kind of see is we now have um, a tool and the ability to visualize on a live basis what the floor utilization actually looks like. And you can imagine a lot of organizations are running through run books, trying to figure out how they need to configure their space, et cetera. How do they need to potentially increase distancing? Where do they need to enhance or really drive their cleaning efforts to? And this can just show you here what the hot spots and the cold spots are within that facility. And we have the ability to look on a daily basis and you can kind of see how it progresses, right? Uh, the, the hot spots, the cold spots. You can see some of this is static because the chairs aren't moving. But this gives you a good uh good representation of the power of the tool, the power of the context, and be able to deliver it to organizations so that they can make more educated sort of decisions in this very fluid sort of time. And then that really the second and last case I wanna show you is really around the contact tracing tools that we're providing to contact tracers, specifically in the function that they're doing is around case tracing. I'm sick, I inform myself to the organization. The organization now wants to interview me and figure out my whereabouts and potentially who I've been come in close contact to. So here, what you'll see here, I'll pick a individual. You can see it's all obfuscated here because we don't want to have PII data here. But if I pick person 12, I now see all the other contacts he's, he or she has made and the specific sort of distances, a unique capability that we have because we not only have Wi-Fi connectivity, but indoor location services is we can not only see where that proximity or exposure actually, where, uh, the distance it happened in, but exactly where on the floor it actually happened. And we have the ability to look at this. We have the ability to export this because customers may want to put it into their own BI tool. We also have the ability to actually look at it from a time access perspective. So uh, instead of looking at tabular format, it's just easier for an individual tracer to be able to figure out, you know, who I should be interviewing. Um, you know, furthermore, you can go back here and you can actually go and look at it from an exposure perspective. And we could say, okay, who's actually been within two meters for more than 10 minutes. Once again, we could actually see where that intersection occurred. And then the final piece I'll leave you guys with is for that sick individual, once again, um, if it is a sick individual here, we can now go back and figure out exactly where that individual was. Um, and this gives a better idea and allows organizations to really focus their enhanced cleaning efforts, which are very time intensive on the specific areas of need. So with that, I know we're a little short on time, but I wanted to just give you a real world example of how we're leveraging the great edge context combined with the cloud delivery capabilities to be able to solve for a very, very relevant use case right now. And then in this case, it's the return to office sort of use case. I have only one question. I mean, um, very quickly, uh, which I don't know. So you, you track the person means that you are associating the person with multiple devices, right? Yeah. So um, we're actually doing it to, through two methods. We're tra tracking, uh, doing the contact tracing through both Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi method and a Bluetooth method. In a Wi-Fi method, as you said, a user may have multiple devices. Some of those devices may be stationary, like my laptop and reside at our desk. Some of it may be a phone and move around, or maybe I have multiple phones. And that's where we're leveraging some of the AI techniques to really figure out what is really 
the phone most, the device most associated with the individual and reducing the noise. From a BLE perspective, um, we actually have an asset tag, which actually is packaged quite well to be delivered as a wearable device. So many of our organizations are basically putting this tag on the physical access badge or maybe on a wearable device. And you know, as a condition of the phases of opening, when you come back in, you're gonna need to wear one of these devices as you're within the facility. So hopefully that answers your question.